What's up guys, I'm Alex with BFE Adventures and today we're gonna to discuss what kind of dual sport you should buy. Stay tuned. All right guys, so as you know, if you've followed our channel at all, most of the stuff that we talk about is adventure bikes because we do adventure bike tours, we do adventure bike trainings, and one thing that we've noticed over the years is people like to do dual sports. Typically people in adventure riding, they also do dual sports stuff around town or around their house. And so we are gonna slowly transition some of our content into that kind of stuff because we also have experience in this realm as well. So behind me, you'll see that I have a WR250R on the left. This is a 2014 model, even though I know it looks almost brand new. And then this is uh, a 21 KTM 690. So I have something on the lowest end of the spectrum of dual sports and something all the way on the highest end of the spectrum of dual sports. Uh, just for some credentialing so you can take me seriously, this is obviously my opinion on all of this stuff, but I just wanna tell you some of the bikes that I've owned are ridden extensively in between these so that you know uh, where I'm coming from whenever I'm explaining some of the different things. So on this end of the spectrum, I have ridden or owned this bike, a KLX 300, a uh, KLX 250, a uh, Honda CRF 250L. Uh, I do not have any experience on the new 300 at all. Uh, all I know is based on other reviews, the suspension is really soft, but pretty comparable to the Cowie. Um, that's all I really know on the Honda. Uh, moving up from there, I've owned a WR450, F that was converted to street, uh, KLX 450, uh, KTM 530. I have not owned a KTM 500, but I've ridden a lot of them. All of my buddies have had them at one point or another, and I've ridden them pretty extensively, and they're pretty comparable to the 530. Um, DR650, um, XR650L, XR650R, um, I think that's it. KLR650, I'm not even putting in this category. I've owned one and it is not a dual sport. I don't care what anybody says, it's not. And then moving up, uh, now as you can tell, I own one of these. Um, so like the European 690, 701, gas gas, whatever the gas gas is. So <clears throat> I have a decent amount of experience with dual sport bikes that are four strokes, okay? Two strokes, the only experience I have in this realm is KTM 250s and 300s, okay? I've owned a 300, ridden plenty of 250s. So, which, they're close enough. Anyway, I'm only gonna speak to the four strokes because in my experience, I would never, if I only had one bike, I would not get a dedicated two stroke if I knew I was gonna be like commuting to work for 30 minutes a day on a two stroke, I just wouldn't do it. So this is just four strokes, okay? So now let's get into it. Uh, I hope I don't bounce around too much. I'm gonna try and be as blunt and to the point as possible. So ask any questions in the comments that you can think of. If you like this video, please like and subscribe so that I know what other kind of stuff to give you guys. We have all kinds of different bikes that I'm reviewing and riding all the time uh, that some of the other guys are doing as well. So let me know. We got some really fun ones coming up the pipe for some of the adventure bikes here shortly. Anyway, I just wanna start by saying, if you are gonna buy a dual sport based on power, cause I know you, I've been there and I see these cool videos of people like riding wheelies at 80 miles an hour on a 690 and you think that's what you need and you've never ridden a dirt bike off road, that's not what you need, okay? So I, I just want you to like reel yourself back in for a second. All of that stuff looks cool. All of that marketing crap aside, let's be real. I can have just as much fun on this 250, and I've been riding dirt bikes for well over 20 years. I can have just as much fun on this 250 as I can on this 690, okay? You should pick a dual sport size based on your size and your intended use, not on the power that it produces. Let me say that again. Pick your dual sport based on your size and your type of riding, not how much power it produces. Because in 
many, many scenarios that it matters, those butt-clenching moments, power is totally irrelevant unless it's the one, the thing that got you into that butt-clenching moment, okay? So let's start from the two main things that people should be considering when they're looking at a bike. And if you're watching this video, you're considering A, the price of things, and B, what size to get. And I'm telling you, the size to get should be based on your size and intended method of use. So those are the three things I'm going to talk about. If price is your number one issue, then in my opinion, you should also look for something that's most reliable. If you're worried about not spending too much on a bike, then I'm just assuming, which is on me, but I'm just assuming that you also don't want to spend a whole bunch of time and money on maintenance. And if that's the case, stick with something in the 250-300 realm. They're the cheapest bikes out there, <clears throat> unless you get an older 450 that's converted, which is a high maintenance bike. Go with one of these and you will have a blast. I'm telling you, I've had so much fun on this bike. Just stop this video now and go find one of these. Stop wasting your time on YouTube looking at all the different reviews. The only thing you should be doing is looking at reviews of different 250s. Okay, onward. Now, if we get past the price thing, and <clears throat> price isn't necessarily an issue, or you're, let's say you're in the sub 10,000 range, okay, well, that's when you're looking at used bikes like this or basically anything below that. So we get price out of the way. Now let's talk about your size and your intended method of use. Most of you, I just had a guy, I'm actually about to sell this one and I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I just, where I'm at in life right now, this is really all I need as far as dual sports go. So this one's going down the road. But a guy came here the other night uh, and was concerned about <clears throat> height and because he was tall. Well, I don't know if you can tell in this video, but these bikes, this is a 250 and this is almost a 700 and they are maybe an inch and a half difference in seat height, and it's probably due to the seat concept seat on this one. So do not pick your bike based on size because of your height. Now, weight will play a role. Obviously, if you're 400 pounds, this 250 is barely going to cart your booty around. This 690 will have no problem hauling all of the ass of all of your ass. I don't care how big you are. This is going to move it, okay? So... That is where power will come into play. If you're a bigger guy or a girl, then you probably will need to consider what size bike you're gonna ride, okay? Now, what you should really think about is the engine characteristics of them, okay? If, if you're new to the realm, then it doesn't matter power to cart your butt around because you're just trying to get around and learn the ways you should still stick with the lower end of the spectrum compared to like a 450 converted bike, okay? Or like a KTM 450 EXC or uh, the Honda 450 CRF 450L. Those bikes are 450s. If you've never ridden one, they come on like a light switch when you give it gas. I can tell you they feel hotter than this 690 even. And so a 450, even though that sounds like a good idea, because it's kind of like midway between wild and crazy 74 horsepower and 27 horsepower. But the 450 actually comes on hard. It's a, it's a motocross slash woods bike that's been converted to be street legal. It's a light switch. I would not consider that. I would look at if you're big, then you should look at maybe like a DR650 or an XR650 because that will have the power to move you around, but it's not that erupt torque right off the bottom that a 450 would play. Okay, so like, whereas the 690 and all of its European twins, those don't hit like a 450, but they have this power that never stops. And so, you know, if you're coming across a bunch of bumps or a, uh, some whoops off, off road, if you're out in the sand or desert, and you start hitting some of these and you just accidentally crack your elbow down and get into the throttle, this bike would run away from you if you're not experienced at all or if you white knuckle it. So you have to consider your size, number one, and then your skill level. That would be the next thing to look at. 
if you have experience with it, then honestly do yourself a favor and get something a little bigger because you're always going to want more. If, if you're riding with a bunch of other friends that are comparable in size or skill level to you and they have bigger bikes and they just run away from you all the time and you're already at the skill level to be able to handle something bigger, then you're going to want something bigger. So just save yourself the time. Moving on to the next thing. Uh, oh, going back to this just for a second. Your weight. Don't worry about suspension. If you're a bigger person, just redo the suspension. You're going to have to do that on any bike. So that, it's irrelevant. It cracks me up how some people, I, I just have friends that are bigger that have wanted to get into riding and they worry about like, oh, well, the Honda suspension is too soft or the Yamaha suspension is better, but it's still too soft for a racer. Okay, well, if it's too soft for a racer, it's going to be too soft for you when you get into anything aggressive at all. So you're still going to have to redo the suspension. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. The next part would be look at your intended method of use. If you are going to be riding a lot of street and you still want, if you're riding a lot of street, get a street bike or get an adventure bike. That, that would be what I would say. But if you're trying to do like 50, 50, 70, 30, anything 70, 30 or less, that's when you should consider one of these. Okay. If you're on the higher end of the spectrum of the 70 street, then you would probably want something bigger. I can tell you as a direct comparison, just because these two are sitting here, uh, there's an off-road park for me about 40 minutes away, okay? I've ridden this there multiple times at this point and then ridden at the off-road park and then ridden this home. And by the time I get home, I honestly can't wait to get off of this. I know there's plenty of people that have taken these and turned them into mini adventure bikes and taken them all over the world. Good for them. I, I can't do that. I've ridden all the way out to four corners practically in one trip from St. Louis in one day. So I know what it's like to be in the saddle that long, but that was on a Super Tenere, not a WR. So I would not do that. Whereas if I was gonna go back out to that off-road park right now and pick one of these two, I would pick this every single time because I know that this will cruise all the way there with zero effort zero vibration. I'm going to get there. The off-road trails are easy whenever I get there. They're all like four-wheeler trails and stuff like that. There's no gnarly single track. I'm taking this every single time. If it was a little gnarlier, then honestly, I would probably take this because it's about 55 pounds lighter. And when it's gnarly and nasty, I would much rather have something that can't run away from me. Even though I've been riding a long time, I still would rather have something a little more tame off-road when it gets crazy. If it's just easy stuff, I'm picking this because this is way more thrilling to ride. Um, if you're, again, heavier street bias, look at the 650 plus range. You also have to consider maintenance. Again, going back to that, if you're looking at like the 450s, um, that's just something that they have higher maintenance intervals. Same with the 500s, the 500 EXE, Husky 501. Um, I'm sure there's probably a gas gas alternative that I can't think of off the top of my head. Those bikes are fantastic. The 500s are definitely more suited with a sixth gear to cruise at 65 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, all the way to your destination, but they're still going to have higher maintenance intervals than the 650 and up class, or even these 250s that are more street oriented uh, in their motor um, characteristics. Because this WR250R is absolutely not a WR250F. It is not a YZ250FX. The motor is boring compared to those, but boring is also reliable. So that is all I'm going to say for that. So lastly, to to try and kind of finalize all of this, to try and not bore you guys to death, my overall summary is if you're looking for power because you have a skill set that can handle it, then you should be looking at a 450, 500EXC, or a 690, 701S, or uh, XR650R, that would be a fun one. Um, 
if you do not have that skill set, the only reason you should be looking at these bigger bikes is if you're more heavily street oriented. I can tell you if I'm coming up to a car going 65 and I want to pass them, this is barely going to make it. Okay. Whereas this thing, I could clutch up a wheelie and pass them at 60 miles an hour or 65 and like it was no problem. So there is a huge difference there. If you're going to be a lot, if you're going to be doing a lot of commuting, you should just probably get something a little bigger. If it's commuting long distances, if you're in the city, this is smaller, lighter, more fun. Um, if, if you're looking, lastly, I just put you in like, let's say my category. I have been riding long enough that I won't let this bike run away from me. Most of the riding around me is about 40 minutes away, at least to get to any good riding, maximum being about an hour and a half. I don't want to ride this for an hour and a half there and then ride and then ride an hour and a half home. I would have no problem riding this there and back. So in the, in the world that I'm in now, I'm actually selling this bike because if I want gnarly, then it would be a dedicated off-road bike like the KTM 300. But nowadays I don't have time to just like load up the trailer and make a dedicated weekend to do that. I have two little kids. I'm trailering somewhere if I'm going eight hours away or I'm only riding under two hours away to get somewhere, but most of it's freeway. So this is going to be the bike for me because that's just the style of riding I'm going to do. And it's also an absolute hooligan machine on the back roads. So I hope that helps give you a little perspective. Hope I didn't get too long winded. I was trying to be a little more um, blunt with getting to the point of things. If you have any questions about these bikes or anything in between that I talked about that I've owned, feel free to ask. I'd be more than happy to fill you guys in on that kind of stuff. If you're, if you like this video, please like, and subscribe. It helps us more than, you know, like us on Facebook. And, uh, if you'd be interested in ever joining us on a tour, either reach out to me through this medium or check us out at bfeadventures.com. And, uh, we'd love to have you out on a tour with us and go have some fun. Take care guys. See ya.